Okay, students, hope uh, everyone joined the, the class here. So it's so good to see. All right, so today we'll see a couple of interfaces so wherein how we are trying to uh, reach the external world. So as we said, right, so we are having a different kind of interfaces. So to reach the sensors and actuators, to reach, uh, to get the data, grab the data. Today we'll look into what one of these things called ID interface. Interface, all right. And uh, not only this, uh, this is widely used across all the electronic equipments and everything, right? So we are going to deal, deal with that. And uh, it's used in electronic circuits. And uh, because there are, uh, there is this focus on a concept called master and slaves, multiple masters and multiple slaves concept. So I'd like to give a small heads up before we, uh, before I go ahead into this particular interface. So I2C interface, I2C interface. Uh, let me give a short, uh, show a short note about that. So normally like in electronic search, we have something called masters and slaves like this, all right? So let's say master one is a Raspberry Pi, master two is another uh, um, uh, processor. Slave one is one sensor and slave two is another sensor, all right? There's so a multiple uh, wire connected, all right? So, but uh, they are all connected to only two pins. That is SCL and SDA, SCL and SDA, all right? So SCL and SDA. So SDA stands for uh, serial data and uh, CL stands for serial clock, wherein this particular data line is available from all the uh, masters to from all these slaves as well. For example, say one is trying to talk to slave two, all right? So the slave two is set on a data pin and also we have something called clock pin and all. So everything works on a single clock pulse, all right? So let's say, uh, master one master two will work on the same clock pulse all right so uh let's say if master one is talking to slave two so then slave one and slave two are connected to the same pins how come something called addressing concept all right so and uh slaves have address addresses actually so i can reach this slave on a given address I can slay, reach this slave to on a given address. For example, if you have to reach me at uh, reach my home, right? So it is in Sanatnagar, Hyderabad, and Sanatnagar. So then you need to drill down to our uh, however we are having addresses, right? So similar way we're going to deal with this. So slave one and slave two are having addresses wherein masters can reach them and ask them for a given data. For example, let's say slave one is generating a temperature data. Then what it does is at a given clock pulse. So SDA data, uh, a request will be sent to the slave one. Then slave one will capture all the data and send back on the same data line on the next clock pulse, all right? So all right, so let me show you that. Uh, yeah, it is, all right? Though you can see it, it's a blur, you guys. Even that is blur for me as well. So here you can see a clock pulse which is generating, all right. So and then SDA data, all right, so which is being generated by the data. So like this, we have one high and low pulses which will be generated. So by the master and the slave, so that slave will respond to the request, all right. So and also we have a concept called the addressing concept. So let's say here uh, I have two pins, all right. So like this, like we have. Three, four, and five, six. All right, so three and uh, two and four, uh, uh, like uh, so one, two, three, four, three and fifth, third and fifth pins are the SCL and SD. You can see that. So the serial pin, the serial and serial data is pin is connected to serial data. Rest of the things are same. Sound and VCC are common for any sensor, right? So we have seen that. But here in this case, we are, we are dealing with a direct sensor which is connected to the Raspberry Pi. All right, so the data which is generated by the MP6050, so which will be uh, transmitted in the form of SCL and SDS. Data line which will it will send back to the processing unit, and this processing unit will pick up that data. 
So uh, how do we write program? So we're going to write a Python code on this, so which will uh, try to do all the master slave concept and everything. So what I'll do is I'll try to drill down the actions what it does in in this particular unit. So master, in our case, master is Raspberry Pi sensor that is MPU 6050. MPU. 6050 so this mp6050 is right so to give a heads on this this is a gyroscopic sensor all right so this is a gyroscope which will help you to generate all the uh, data which is available on uh, like uh, for example let's say uh, when you when you're trying to build a drone right drone need, needs to be stabilized when when there is a wind right it might take a different direction but it has to uh, level itself to the Air level, so ground level, something like this, right? So, in order to do the stabilization part, yes, we are going to use this particular gyroscopic sensor, right? So, which is widely used across all the, uh, uh, what to say, uh, drone builds, drone builds, all right? So, and then uh, we have something called uh, helicopters, all right? Helicopters, helicopters. So in India, we don't have uh, the permissions for the drone to fly unless we have uh, police permissions and also air authority permissions. So I'm sure uh, and, uh, sooner or later, drones will be allowed in, in India also. So as of now, we don't have the uh, flexible rules from a aviation uh, authority. So for uh, to build the drone center, but this particular gyroscope is used in uh, that particular uh, in those sensors, and also have used acceleration system, access uh, detection system, detection system, and also prevention as well. Prevention. So normally when you talk about ABS, right? ABS which we have in the cast, right? So these are also being equipped with multiple. Uh, All right, so gyro sensors are, are, are being used, being, being used in this case. All right, so why? Because uh, the uh, especially when you talk about the cars, so front wheels and back wheels. All right, so if they are trying to have, uh, uh, if they are not in sync or if they are to spin over something like this. All right, so that's like it is. Avoid that skid in this particular ABS chip. So if you detect that one immediately, the brakes will be applied, and then so immediately like uh, the brakes will be accordingly applied, and then it will avoid that particular skid in this case. ABS systems we use that in action detection systems. There are a lot of places where we are going to use gyroscopes as well. For example, say uh, I have built one of the car for my kids, so we're in. Uh, the help of hand movements, right? So if I twist my hand uh, to the right direction, it takes uh, uh, it takes a uh, left direction, and then if I twist my hand to the left, right, the car will take a toy car will take a right direction. So this like a small toys you can build, right? So some lot of things can be done with the help of this gyroscope, right? So that is all about slave. All right, so that's a short in. So when you talk about the slave, this has four pins. All right, so there are other pins also, but mainly we'll be using two or four pins. One is VCC, so VCC is nothing but power supply for that, and then ground. So ground is uh, to, uh, to, to VCC and ground will supply the power to the sensor to start working on it. And then we have something called SDA, so that is data pin, all right, data pin, and SCL that is clock pin, all right, so clock. So uh, I think this is sufficient for you guys because you are not going to work on the sensor part just to have a knowledge on this. So you're going to have this particular thing. So we are going to capture the data, capture data. So and uh, on Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi, on Raspberry Pi we have something called three and fifth pin. So I'm talking. Numbers, physical, physical uh, pin numbers. All right. So this will be used as part of our uh, the connectivity part. So we are going to use SCL and SDA accordingly to two pins, and then we are going to connect them. All right. So 
in SCL goes to fifth pin and it the third pin all right so SCL so this is SCL and this is SDA all right so this is SDA so we have seen this one so we are going to connect those two things and then we'll do the work so once you've done the connection part then uh, later comes in uh, later come the uh, actual uh, coding part so where we are going to use this part so we have something called we have a library with the name mpo 6050 mpo 6050 we're going to import that how do we import that m libraries guys so in normal sense right so so here i have some practical code right so we have something called smbus and we're going to use time i mean uh, time libraries and smbus all right so and we're going to use something called sleep in our this on the notepad and then show it to you guys oh, this is c1 okay got it i'm using atom in our case so save it as mp650 okay so i'm going to share this uh, uh, code also please don't mind so after this class i'll be sharing that all right okay so coding part is done all right so here in this case uh, we have you can see a lot of uh, hexadecimal numbers here all right so uh, over these numbers we have something called address pin also that i'm going to show you in shortly all right and then we have uh, definitions method definition the mpu in it and there are something called uh, raw uh, read raw data all right so and then we are going to use initiate mp650 in this case and uh, when you send uh, the data raw data and we are going to send some uh, address values right there are some internal registers which will help us to grab all those details all right so that we are going to capture that all right so here in this case all right so and let me go ahead and show you where the device address starts from see that hmm. so can you see this so here is the actual execution starts from so we are going to initiate something called sms and first thing is we are trying to import the sms bus and then time so if they are not available by default they'll be available if they are not available just use pip command to install it so they'll be available for you and then we are going to do this so here we have a little to them later in this case so we are going to start with initialization guys all right so here we are trying to initialize the bus bus and then we are trying to uh, give the address and it's a address is zero x six eight how do i get this particular address is that fixed for each sensor each kind of sensor yes it is all right so and for example let's say um so that you can get it from the data sheet this is especially for the electronics on it but just to have a knowledge on this right so you can have uh, you can go ahead into the data sheet pick up a pdf version of it all right and then uh you just go down here I open this PDF, which is available for you. All right, you can see MP6050 is a product specification, guys. All right, this is all about the sensor. So, it's taking a couple of minutes, so kindly wait for me. Or if you link just MPU6050. Uh, address address all right so this just click on that address even that is a official way. so it will give you like right? so mp6050 it says uh 0x69 or 0x68 so usually we'll go with even that will give you straightforward or if you want very keen to know from the product specification guide all right so you can get the pdf file and then you can search for the address as well
all right so mp6050 can be used in all these kind of things all right hand motion motion based all right so wearable sensors all right for health and fitness all right so for example this particular sensor can be used as a uh, number of steps right by you in a day right so something like this you can use this particular sensor to capture those details also all right so and address all right zero x six eight yeah it is showing something else but you can figure out easily from this data sheet also which is possible all right x six eight these are all about the product specification so since you are not an electronics guy you can just ignore that not a problem all right but you would find this certainly find this here i couldn't find this right now i don't want to waste it here so let's go ahead proceed further right so 0x68 you can capture it from the google or from the pdf file so which is done there. and it is coming into the mp unit so mp unit what we are trying to do is so it goes back here mp unit it is trying to set the uh, add, uh the values here uh, device address we have it and it is picking up the values right as d1 all right so these are all the addresses internal addresses of the sensor all right so in sensor itself all right so let me show you that diagram so shall give you a clear picture on what we are trying to do yeah we are there almost yep so if you observe here guys all right so this is SCL and SDA, all right? We are trying to look into that. So, and then uh, this data will be coming to the slave ITC and it has something called sensor registers, all right? Sensor registers are nothing but uh, every sensor, all right, as you can see, X acceleration, Y direction acceleration, Z direction acceleration, X uh, direction gyroscope, all right? uh y direction gyroscope and z direction gyroscope right everything is having an address that address all right so all those data whatever it is generated right so generated and being saved across this particular registers and also we have something called fifo concept so all the values will be stored in the fifo for if we are not trying to read those values also all right so but for example let's say so in this sensor registers we are going to have all these values in the case all right so you can see all the uh, hexadecimal values you can see it right so x acceleration uh, you can see something called h also you don't worry about that so we're going to deal with that in a later section so x y and z accelerations and each of the address each of the value has been stored in a different locations all right so once you reach the address we're going to reach all these registers and grab the values all right so that's exactly what we are trying to do as part of our coding all right so here in this case we are trying to few things first to enable and to generate the data all right so we're going to set this part and then once you're done this particular thing all right so then we are coming into the while loop all right so in while loop it is trying to read one by one here x axis acceleration y acceleration and z acceleration all right so raw data all right so and all of this so x y and z out and we are going to capture all of those data and we're going to save it and next thing is the gyroscope raw values we are going to send the address and get the get the value we're going to send the address and we're going to get those values and so they are in a raw form uh, raw data and we are trying to convert those to the degrees here in this case so we have some uh, sensitivity factors so that with that we are going to divide them and then get the actual values all right so we are trying to convert some actual values and then trying to get those values here in this case all right so for example let's say here in this case gyroscope x gyroscope y and gyroscope z all right so we have these values all right as you know like uh, gyroscope right so as you know 
so if you tilt your hand to the right side so if your car is going to the right side if you're try, trying to tilt your hand to the left and it is going to the left right your gyroscope data is being transmitted into the car wirelessly and the car is re reacting according to that all right so let's say i would have certain uh, raw values here in this case but since i'm not having the lab here i'm not in the lab so i'm not able to show it but tomorrow i'll be able to show all those values and do the work and all so let's try uh, for a quick example let's say here in this case gyroscope all right so gyroscope x is nothing but so which will help us so let's say uh, we are trying to deal with a bike accident in this case all right so bike accident normally gx values will range from normal uh, sensitivity factors ranges from sorry minus 45 to plus 45 to the right or to the left and bike will still even get to the road if you go to any uh, sports bikes right if you go to any uh, motor gp or motocross races right so they even tilt the bike beyond 45 degrees also but in our safety case, I'm trying to give a range of minus 45 to plus 45, right? So 45. And if bike goes beyond that, immediately I need to generate an order. Then in this case, what I can simply go is, so, all right? So I can copy this greater than 45, or let right, so us use a pipe symbol and GX less than minus 45, all right? Will give you, we are going to generate some alerts. Right, generate. I'm just trying to uh, in the in this condition generate alerts. Right, generate alerts. This in this case. All right. So I'm going to add a comment line so that it will not harm my execution program. All right. So this particular condition will help me to do that job generation of alerts can be anything i can generate sms's or email alerts right or uh, any um right so or uh, or any uh, facebook all right so facebook or uh, uh, whatsapp alerts right whatsapp alerts all of that all right so a lot of things can be done uh, at this at this minute right so but in our case you are trying to interact uh you're going to generate this data and save it in the file all right so then here in this case what we do is, so we're going to write this write this data this data to a flat file flat file and then we'll upload upload to a given destination destination so given destination so it can be an s3 bucket or a google drive or an excel sheet google uh, google sheets all right so like that we can try to push any uh, any else data on it right? so we can try to push the data to any any places as well so that is up to your choice so you can try so we here in our lab right we have done something related to sms alerts whenever a bike falls right or uh, bike falls when it is on travel right so there are multiple conditions right so like for example let's say if you are you parked your bike and someone have uh, accidentally thrown your bike also so even then uh, alerts will be generated that's not the point right here we're going to apply some ai techniques so that's like uh, when it is on the drive for example in this case we can attach with a gps sensor I'll, I'll show that in another few minutes time so gps sensor is nothing but wherein you're going to generate uh, the speed of the vehicle and also in which direction it is going and what is the gps coordinates latitude and longitude right uh, we're going to look into that area also so we can combine these two sensors data and then we can make some additions uh, based out of that particular data as well all right so here in this case what he's trying to do is he's capturing all the data and he is trying to just throw the values back to the user. All right. So, but in a and try writing that flat file so that you can do a study of the driving pattern. Also, this is what we are going to use as part of our third experiment, guys. So, I think I have given you that particular 
uh, data, right? So we are going to use these two sensors data, and you're going to uh, generate a driving pattern. All right, so you're going to do that study after this course. All right, so you're going to take it as an assignment and then you're going to work on that assignment. All right, I'll help you out with the setting up part and then doing the work and all. So you can work on data. All right, so you're going to work. All right, so first thing is done, and next thing is, uh, next thing is, so you're going to work on uh, something called GPS sensor. All right, so GPS sensor, what it does is it's gonna generate latitudes and longitudes and uh, GPS speed. All right, so if you observe any high-end vehicles like uh, Rolls Royal or anything, right? So uh, BMW or Mercedes Benz, they doesn't have the manual speed. Of right, so they this data is directly. So you have running around India right? so these will generate data point to point data even if you take a step to the right or step to the left it is going to show that moments but as of now uh, in your mobile phones you don't see that all right so even if you take a step over to the right or left it will not show because you are not using the GPS chip in our in our mobile phones right that comes as part of our satellite phones as well right? so which is which you are not authorized to use enough but in our case so gps receivers we can use because that is free of course we can use them i mean uh, the licensing part is free so you can use that and uh, so gps speed is available and also apart from this we have several parameter called altitude alti so this parameter gives us on which floor, which floor a person is. Person is. All right. So if you have this GPS chips, uh, wearable chips uh, on on your wearable uh, watches and all, right? You can know the person where exactly he is, in which building, on which floor, in which room he is available. So we can know all of this particular data in this case. I'll it. So GPS sensor is that powerful. So I'll I'll show that guys. So just give me a minute. So yes, here it is. All right. So this is a GPS sensor. So also called as Neo 6M. All right. So we call it as Neo 6M, and we are going to connect uh, to one of the pins. So here we are going to generate the TX, and here we are going to connect the RX pin of the Raspberry Pi. We're going to receive this data. This particular connectivity is called UART communications. UART communications. So just minute before I have done uh, given you that UART comes. So, which has uh, unlike uh, unlike uh, the MP6050, we here we have the VCC and G and D, and we have something called RX and and TX pins. All right, so RX is nothing but receiver and transmitter. Here it is like you are transfer universal asynchronous receiver and transmitter. So we are going to uh, it works on asynchronous mode. So you're going to generate the data. You're going to receive the data. Uh, from the same uh, chip as well so here in this case we're going to generate all of that data all of this data like uh, altitude latitude speed and everything we're going to do that apart from this it has a temperature uh, sensing part and uh, we have uh, uh, these are the few parameters which we can use and we have something called number of satellites also so that is generally for uh, building a satcom mobile phone so something like this uh, satellite phone something like that how many satellites we are able to connect not just single satellite guys we can connect to all 16 satellites which are available right uh, based on your location and position also right we're going to look into that and uh, like for example let's say in army or uh, any other guys right so if they are in a if they have uh, passed out themselves in a in an isolated area they can have this uh, set uh, this uh, those work on any mobile phone or anything uh, anything else but in this case they know the latitude longitude based on that they will uh, the base guys can know can figure out where they exactly they have punched out and then they can go there and and start a rescue mission on that so in this case yes all right so latitude longitude gps speed altitude this will help you to capture a lot of data and uh, all right so and even that for them for that also we have a python code guys let me show you that all 
all right so we're going to use something called serial in this case in the other uh, interface we have used all right so the results will look like the results look like this guys all right so latitude longitude and we have latitude and longitude in degrees this is uh, the regular uh, uh, raw data and once you convert that into radians so we have this data and we can uh, use this data and copy that and we can open it any google maps also generally this is used for tracking or as a tracking whichever it is right so you can use all of that and then we can try capturing that data and if you observe the code guys so here in this case we are using serial a time and web browser and uh, sys also in this and uh, these are the two functions the so gps info and then convert to degrees all right so and we are going to use a certain uh, uh, usb serial port that can be used as part of our communications because we are using the uart communications so that is another uh, another name which is given for it is the serial ports all right we're going to use and connect that and then get capture the data and uh, these are all being uh, initialized to zero and then uh, and then we start start working on receiving the data once you read the data we get the raw data and then we are going to convert some methods and split them and we're going to use uh, some all right so split data and then we're going to ca capture the actual information and the actual, and then we are going to capture the latitude and longitude all these things are done by uh, libraries also so there are certain libraries which are already available you just need to call them and then capture that data so this is a very raw form of using that particular application in this case and this will not stop unless we provide a key interrupt or a power failure so this keeps generating the data in our case so we're going to combine so in next class in tomorrow's class what i'll do is i'll show these two things at first right so and then we connect these two and then we i'm gonna show the data generated from the live uh, sensors and then once i'm done with those sensors right i'm gonna combine those two and we're going to work on uh, a requirement so this weekend so we're going to work on a requirement i'm going to show those two sensors and then we'll stop there but on weekend right so i'm gonna we're going to work on the poc part so wherein we are going to work on uh, this data and all. all right so any questions guys with that i'm stopping guys and i'll see you guys tomorrow so we'll catch up tomorrow guys all right take care bye bye